Welcome to Theories and Problems in Visual Art. This is History Lecture 25, Rewriting Art History Part 4, Beyond Fine Art. So here I'm going to talk about three more problems uh, that people have thought about in relation to changing or rewriting uh, the World Art History Survey. First of all, Visual Studies, that's the name of a field that started around 1990 and was first seen as a competitor to art history um, and it includes um, popular imagery like advertising and television and so on. So visual studies is a way to expand uh, and also alter uh, and possibly improve, at least change radically, um, art history and the survey if you include all those things in it. Um, and then the question of what is beyond visual studies. There are other kinds of visual practices and even visual practices, ways of making and interpreting images that are beyond uh, outside of universities and colleges altogether. So they're not, not, they're not art at all, things like business images. So these are widening circles and I have some slides that explore them uh, in that way. Just to recap uh, this series of lectures, because this is the fourth and last in this series of uh, four lectures on ways of rewriting the art history survey. The first one was on women artists um, and race and ethnicity. The second was on shrinking Europe uh, and deciding on what counts as a canon. Um, and the previous one was on distributing attention through time and through the world and distributing attention by looking at cultures in some way that would be fair, equitable. Um, and this one completes the list of 10 um, problems that people have thought about in relation to the survey. So oh, visual studies. Visual studies is the main field um, whose scholars have tried to expand art history. At the School of the Art Institute, it's called visual and critical studies, but usually it's called visual studies or visual culture studies. It was founded in the US in the 1990s. Um, and the idea was to get away from fine art um, and to start studying mass media, especially television and advertising. So I have a series of slides uh, to show how visual studies grows outward from art history in circles. It's kind of like a target metaphor. So starting from the center, at the center of the target would be traditional art history and also aesthetics. So classical Greek and Roman sculpture to stand for that. Very European, very mainstream, center of the target kind of stuff. Still in the bullseye, which is art history and aesthetics, is the study of modern art. And that's, by the way, that's a photograph of the two monk paintings as they were retrieved after they had been stolen. Um, and you see little one of them is kind of gouged. Anyway, study of art history and aesthetics would be the um, also fields that traditionally have always studied modern and contemporary art. Starting in the 1920s, art history also started looking at crafts and minor arts. And that's a Roman uh, oil lamp. And the reason I have it there is that uh, there were um, there were artists. I mean, there were uh, scholars in Europe in the 1920s um, that started studying things like these Roman decorative arts um, and uh, things like rugs um, and uh, objects like that that hadn't been studied by art history before. So crafts and minor arts, and also within art history, there's the study of non-Western art. These things on this slide, the previous slide, and to some degree also the slide of modern art, these are things that art history has added um, to the discipline over the last hundred years. Um, and of course, in sometimes in places, um, they're not studied as much as they are uh, in others, but at any rate, they're all uh, conventionally part of art history. Okay, so now to move beyond that out into the next circle, this would be visual studies, film studies, media studies, so the study, for example, of photography. It's not that photography isn't studied in art history, but it had been studied only very rarely in art history before this new field of visual studies started. Um, so this is a, that's one of the world's first photographs that I have on the screen there. So the history of photography and also contemporary photography. And then uh, beyond visual studies in colleges and universities, there are also departments of film studies and media studies that also um, looked at things like film, uh, and so film studies and media studies sometimes are also part of visual studies. So I put them all together. It doesn't really matter for what we're talking about here. 
visual studies um, also um, include scholars who are interested uh, in internet art of various sorts, like this is one of these um, uh, collaborative or um, it's kind of battling drawings uh, in, in a single space in this case. So studying, um, studying digital art in general, including all of its manifestations and social media and so on also is part of a uh, traditional part of visual studies or visual culture studies. So also in that same ring of visual studies, there would be the study of popular visuality. So miniature golf on a cruise ship. Um, and visual, people who study visual studies have written um, articles and entire books on things like miniature golf. So that's a, these are things that art historians um, still don't really do. Um, and so visual studies has provided, has, has jumped into that, um, into that unexplored territory as it were. So now I'm going out one more circle beyond visual studies, things that visual studies doesn't study and neither does art history. This would include visual communications, design, and advertising. Um, this is a picture of one of these uh, earwax scopes that, uh, that were a fad in Japan. And you, could, you, could, you can still buy these on the internet where you get to look at your own earwax. So looking at things like this in general, the field of visual communications and design and advertising, these kinds of things, they, they, are, um, they are sometimes um, uh, researched by people who identify themselves as visual studies scholars, but in general, they belong um, outside of visual studies in more um, practical or practically oriented fields like visual communications, uh, which is uh, a department at the School of the Art Institute and design and advertising. And um, also more or less in this ring would be the, the study of book design, graphics and typography, which is uh, some of those are done in media studies and a little bit in visual studies as well. So I added those in. So these, the bullseye of art history and aesthetics, in other words, art history and art theory, and the second ring or the first ring around the bullseye, which is visual studies, and then this ring, which, which um, includes that, but also goes beyond it. These would be the things that have been seen as um, part of the expansion of the academic study of the visual world. It's possible to go beyond all of these. I'm calling this beyond visual studies, but of course I, I also mean um, beyond visual communications, design, and these others. Because there are many kinds of visuality that are practiced in universities that don't count as part of any of the things I've mentioned so far. So for example, chemical engineering, they produce images all the time. They have their own ways of, of making them and interpreting them. Same with law, same with food science and medicine. And what you're looking at here is a picture of, um, that was uh, submitted to an exhibition um, that I curated on visual practices in the university. So where everybody in the university was asked um, to submit a picture of the kinds of images they use. So this guy from the, from the hospital affiliated with the university submitted this picture because he wanted to show everyone how amazing he was at picking the colors of porcelain teeth. So that's on my list in the second line, restorative dentistry. And uh, this exhibition that I curated included a lot of things like this. I'll show one or two more in the next um, slides. But what this made me aware of is that there are a lot of fields that make images. And in fact, if you just add up the number of publications, these fields, all the things you see here and others besides um, outnumber uh, art history, visual studies, design, visual communications, and all the rest of them that we associate more or less with popular visual culture and with fine art. It's another example. This is, um, uh, that's what's called a phase contrast x-ray, a special kind of x-ray where you can see like a little bit of textures of skin and things like that. This one, which was also submitted for that same um, exhibition on visual practices through the whole university, um, this one is models of the way that uh, magma comes up from the center of the earth. So it's a geological image uh, that was used uh, in the geology department, which is also on that list there. So these kind of things are, are not very much talked about um, in the art world, obviously, but also not very much talked about in design or visual communications or those other fields. These belong in a ring that's outside of those uh, two innermost rings on that bullseye. And you can go even further, you can go outside of universities where you find 
all the entire world of business practices, business images. This is just from a website of someone who sells, uh, it's a company that makes metal tags. And this one, no, this one is a funny one. It's, this is a company that makes an ink that's supposedly so permanent that even if you dissolve away the paper that the ink has been used to write on, that the ink still remains. That's what you see on the right there. Dissolved away the paper and the ink is still there. I have absolutely no idea what that's good for, but anyway. So business practices are another way of thinking of, um, of art that's outside of all of these categories. So here's another graphic just to end, a different way to visualize this. You could think of the smallest circle here as art history and the next smallest as visual studies. And then the large one would be all these other fields that produce and interpret images, I suppose, up to and including the business images that I was just showing. Um, if you do uh, library searches for this literature, this is the kind of result you get, that we in the art world are really just a tiny little circle. And uh, within that tiny little circle is the Eurocentric um, uh, story of art that's still the spine of uh, the art world art history survey. So there's there's a lot of room um, to expand. Same kind of thing, can, moral can be drawn from this that I showed in the previous lecture. These non-art imagery is the second to the bottom on the left, non-art imagery number nine, science and medicine. Um, and just above that, the cyan and the green, those are, those are visual studies things. So they are, um, they are sometimes taught, um, but especially the non-art stuff very rarely. Uh, in, in uh, art surveys, but they definitely could be. If you were to do something like that uh, and try to teach some of those, you could crowd out your curriculum with them as I was showing. So just as a last graphic along those lines, um, here was our final uh, idea for how to change the um, arts, art history survey in that university in Ireland. Um, you would have only four weeks in yellow on the right there, only four weeks for everything that's in your entire, well, five weeks, sorry, <laughs> that everything that's in your entire year of the World Art History Survey. The second half and the, the, the second to the right column, the bottom part, the second part of the fall semester in Cyan, that would be all the visual studies material. So um, here at the School of the Art Institute, that would presume, presumably be taught by people in the visual and critical studies department, as opposed to people in the art history department. You could then have the entire spring semester on all of those kinds of imagery that happen outside of art, which you see on the far right. Um, that, and that could be expanded even more. I don't, I don't imagine that a thing like this will ever happen, but if you were to become interested in the entire visual world, this is more like what the survey would look like. So this is a uh, problem like all the others of these um, 10 problems in this series of four lectures that you have to decide for yourself how you, how you um, would teach it or what an ideal version of it would be. If you did something like what I showed on the last two screens, you would be compressing and cutting um, an awful lot of art history so much that it would probably be illegible. But um, by way of trade-off, you would be much more fair um, fairly representative for what's happening in the world because uh, most images are on the internet. Most images are, um, are popular images, um, TV, social media, and all the rest of that advertising. Um, and even beyond that, that whole world of images that don't even count as art. If in any of those um, ways of thinking, you would essentially quote unquote solve the problem of the art history survey essentially by squeezing it out <laughs> or dissolving it or disintegrating or something like that may very well be what happens in the future.